why the Nazis went to Tibet, Egypt and Antarctica, what was they looking for and um, do you know if they found anything? Well, they were looking for technology. Um, they also were heavily supported by the Fuel Society. Um, the Fuel Society actually sponsored the founding of the Nazi party. They were still into the heavily into the blood cult. You know, they had to affirm that they were of not of Jewish tribal blood, and nothing had none of that blood had flowed into their family for generations. Why Jewish blood? Out of the thirteen tribes of Israel, they believed that they were forsaken. What do you mean by forsaken? that since they did not hold up the tenets of God and maintain those 12 tribes as a priestly family unto God, that they were forsaken, and that's why they were lost. Right. So was Hitler a Saurian or a hybrid? No, he was a thief. You know, as you know, they revered the Vril Yah. You know, the Fuel Society, there was a race that lived under the surface, which is kind of true, as you know. Yes. So they had tech that was unheard of at that time. They observed the Vril Yah and saw a liquid that was used in tech as well, not only with their technology, but also the healing of their own body. And... Simply put, you can observe that and you can think, oh, it can be used for a great use or it can be used for a military use. Well, they named the, that fluid Vril because of the Vril Yah. It became the hot new buzzword of Germany. I mean, it's to this day, everything, there's a lot of products on the market that still contain the word vril, like bovril. It's a, it's a type of bullion. But it means, a vril translation of, would mean like invigorating or empowering. Would this be chi power? No. The, the, Energy was observed that was liquid. It was an infusing, or, yeah, an infusion. Sorry. Was that heavy water? Because uh, I know the Nazis were experimenting. I think it's called heavy water. Yeah. But you can't speak yeah. about that. No. But it's one thing I can say that it's used in you know a lot of our nuclear plants here in the United States. Well yeah, if you fell into heavy water, you would sink. There's no possible way you could actually swim and move through heavy water. However, you know, it's unlike you jumping into a pool of in your backyard. So why is it so important, heavy water? I don't even know what it is. Well, it's used to contain a radioactive field. You know, like I said, it's used in our you know, nuclear power plant here to contain plutonium rods. Right. This water actually creates sensation. So where did they get that technology from? That would be the Vril Yaw. Now you've asked about the Vril in the past. However, that was the wrong question. What was the right question? Who are the Vril Yaw? Are they still in existence today? In the northern parts of 
Russia, Germany, Switzerland. Yes. Are they enemies of the Saurians? No. They are educators. So these are nothing to do with the Masons or any other Templars or anything no. like that? No. No, they're an entity unto them unto themselves. But from the Thule's observations, they stole technology from these people. You know, the Flying Wing was one of them. Have you ever heard of Foo Fighters? Do you know what they are? No, I don't. Uh, there was tiny globes of light that World War II pilots said was floating in World War II. So I don't know if that was anything to do with anti-gravity. Apparently there was orbs that was floating um, that the Nazi had sent up when there was bombing made. Oh, and they'd, the they'd, trans- and they'd attach themselves to the planes. They'd be attracted to electricity, I think. I don't know if it was a consciousness transportation means or if it was an actual physical transportation means. All right. I, I, did, I have heard of it. Oh, absolutely. They were on a major league hunt for anything that has to do with legend or the occult or, you know, spirituality. They wanted everything. So it was believed that Hitler received the Spear of Destiny. However, we know that it was in the area of Afghanistan and Pakistan that it now has resides in its own temple. Things are being ret- there's a reason for antiquities being returned to their original places. You know, Egypt is one of these that requires their artifacts to be returned because these are important tools and they belong in their temples. You know, just because someone is of a Christian denomination does not, you know, entail them to have the Ark of the Covenant in their home. What did they find in Tibet? Anything? And the Nazis. Yes. They found the vibrational technology that is associated with the Nagini. Well, Von Braun was quoted as saying, from them. You know, they learned from the Vril Yah. This was, you know, basically a, a reverse engineering party that took all of this information and they tried to recreate it with their own scientists. They were, you know, educators just like Saurians are. Yes. You know, we don't have a one side or the other. You know, the uplifting of knowledge is the uplifting of all. Did you find anything in Antarctica? The sleepers. And that's why they were ran off. Who were the sleepers? You would refer to them as the giants. We call them the world eaters. They still live there today, do they? Yes. How big are they? Large. Are they humanoid? They are humanoid, but they are far from human. So where did they come from? That is still debatable. Our personal belief. Now, your belief may be different, which I respect. We believe these are the children of the Elogium. The Elogium, that would be the Anunnaki. Yes. So that would have been the Alpha Draconians. The Elogium are not the Alpha Draconians. The Elogium are a a separate species, however. You know, they were very much into the manipulation of genomes. And they were 
uh, they are an older race compared to the Alpidrathonians. So do make a difference between the two. So the sleepers must be intelligent then. Mm-hmm. I would like to thank them comatose for eternity. But when they were locked into the ice, they were put into a slumber. With the sleepers, you know, they were locked into the ice. Our major city is in Antarctica. Antarctica. You know, it is based in our, our custody to keep them sleeping. To keep people from coming in and disturbing that slumber. So was they locked up there as a punishment? Well, they were locked up to protect us. So who locked them up? That's the great question now, isn't it? Could that have been the Pleiadians? If I could confirm that, that would be wonderful. However, I cannot. Are we under threat by them, or are they taken care of? Um, if they wake up, we're under a major threat. They're demigods. You couldn't... I mean, there's ways to kill a god, yes, but... I don't think it would be possible. And I use the term, you know, demigod and god, of course, as a different being much more powerful than you Mm -hmm. and I. If I were to go outside to see a caterpillar on the ground with a simple thought, I can destroy that caterpillar, but no matter how hard it tries to survive, it will fail. Do you think they was put there as a backup plan in case something went wrong? Uh, or security? I would hate to think so. Uh, you, know, you tell your stories to your offspring about monsters and boogeymen. Our scary stories involve the sleepers. I mean, just the awakened consciousness of a sleeper would wreak havoc. You know, legends, in fact, are based in truth. Now, we have seen the Nile run red in, you know, since biblical history. We have seen... Frogs rain down from the sky. You know, we have seen plagues and miasma, you know, killing people, famine. We've seen plagues of locusts from every country on earth, you know, destroying crops. This is natural phenomena. However, when called upon in such, you know, amount, in such a short recorded part of time, you know, there are isolated incidents. Can you tell us a bit about the ancient Israelites? We've touched on it lightly before, but can you go into a bit more detail? Sure. Um, First, I'd like to address, you know, quote unquote, aliens in the Bible. Yeah. There are entities referred to in the Bible as Gur, which is kind of funny because there's a cartoon my children used to watch growing up about an alien and his companion named Gur. Now, according to Deuteronomy, Gur is shared or it shared a close proximity with the Israelites, but maintained a cultural distance from that group. You know, this is where we get the word stranger. You know, it is also written that Gur were in Egypt in Deuteronomy 23, verse 17, and in Deuteronomy 14, verse 21. It says, you shall not eat anything which dies of itself. 
you may give it to the alien who is in your town so that he may eat it, or you shall sell it to a foreigner. Gur occurs 92 times in the Hebrew Bible. Can we explain to people why you know so much about the Bible? Um, actually, yes. It was a fascinating topic for me and much debate with many people. And I actually attained my degree in theology. So, for all the Christians out there, your minister could be a Saurian for all you know. Very true. It is, but at the same time, you have to address things like this. And as many as I get, I try to do the best I can, but... The odds are overwhelming at points in time. And it's just uh, one of the things you have to take, you know, one by one and say, look, this is how I believe. This is how it is. And either you can take this information and utilize it or you can reject it and walk away. But please don't deter others from making that same choice. Give them the same freedom that you had. There were laws for participating in Passover and keeping of the Sabbath. And it was absolutely okay for Gur to participate if they were circumcised. <clears throat> Which means that these Gur had a humanoid entity. Uh, going back to the 13 tribes. You know, most time you hear about the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, that's because Levi, one of the 12 sons of Joseph, he was not given the inheritance because they were not a nation of priests, which mm -hmm. Israel was supposed to be. Hence, there are only 12 mentioned, but in reality, there are 13. Have you heard about the theory that America, England, and Canada are the... 13 tribes of Israel? Actually, yes. Um, the remaining members of the tribes of Israel were said to scatter across the earth or across Terra and populate and teach and hold the covenant. So that would make okay. the Americans, the English, the Canadians, that would make us yeah. the the Japan's the, imperial family as well. That that'd make us well the Vikings as well. Uh, mm -hmm. That that'd make us the true uh, Jews. Yep, the children of Israel. And that because I know at the moment um, the 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 people who call themselves Jews at the minute they haven't even have got any ancestry from Jerusalem. They they descend from Scythia and Kazakh. Yeah, Kazakh. So, we so we're the real because a lot of blacks as well think they're the ancient Israelites. Can you explain that? Yes, the thirteen tribes are, of course, Levi, Nephtel, Asher, Dan, Benjamin. Let's see if I can remember all these. Manasseh, Ephraim, Zebulon, Issachar. Yoda, Gad, Simon, and Reuben. You can see evidence of this in the flags, can't you? Yes, you can. And see, one thing that we wanted to, you know, because, you know, he Joseph had 22, or, yeah, at the time, 12 children. His descendants... Especially, I would like to call your attention to the tribe of Dan. Uh, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way and a viper by the path that bites the heels of the hooves of the rider shall falleth down. You know, so, the, was that a Sabian tribe or a hybrid tribe? Hybrid tribe. Right. So they was living with the other tribes of Israel? Yes. Out of the 144,000, 10 of the tribes of Israel carried away by the Assyrians, they intermarried and disappeared as a distinct people. Now, the 
the 13 tribes are supposed to be a pure blood, you know, institution of priests. You know, due to the interbreeding of different peoples in the, is a major factor in the kingdom of priests. You know, as mentioned in the Bible, you know, I love the world, but Israel is my favorite. And there you shall be a kingdom unto thee. But everyone thinks that Israelites, you've got the black Israelites, you have the Jewish Israelites, and then you have people from Europe who believe they're Israelites. No, color and ethnicity has no bearing on being a hybrid. It also has no bearing on being one of the original 13 tribes. You know, these were pure blood priests of God. They chose not to remain in Israel as a priestly kingdom for the world. When they departed, they interbred with Assyrians and they disappeared as a distinct people. You know, they were one of the world. They were no longer cloistered genetically in Israel. You know, in Levitican law, there's a list of rules for the Gur. Did you know that? No. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, if the girl were to be assimilated into the culture, they had to follow a strict Levitican code. They had to be circumcised. They had to um, abhor the touching of swine. They could not eat shrimp. They could not wear blended clothing. You know, they had to keep the holy Sabbath. They could not... Um, Swear fealty into another graven image. I mean, it's it's the same things that would apply in the Old Testament law. It all goes back to the Scythians. Um, yes. Obviously, they, they came about through Hercules having babies with a, a viper maiden. And also, I find it strange that they wear a long helmet. Hybrids have elongated skulls. So the long yeah. helmets was probably to hide the elongated skulls. Yes. And couldn't you imagine the, the shock and awe factor of the opposing army when they saw mounted cavalry with extended helmets, thinking, oh, crap, here they come. I mean, you could have had, you know, five or six hundred in the army. But an army of 10,000, that's nothing. So you give everybody a Scythian helmet, and you think, oh, God, we're done. And they also wore scaled armor. Yes. Even the barding for the horses. I mean, how, more, how much more evidence do you need? Um, flashing neon signs and skin like, um, I'm not very familiar with the, the X-Men people, but the blue one that changes into different people. Today it's Ukraine, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's, yeah, in the Caucasus Mountains. Yeah, it's round, North... where, round about where Ukraine is. Yep, and the Persians called them the Saka, and the Chinese called us the Sai. And I also find it strange that it was Ukraine that was starved um, by Stalin. Do you think this was anything to do with trying to get rid of the hybrids? Most, I mean, I've, I did hear about the Crimea, but I am still the, very much the isolationist. Can you tell us about DMT? It's a drug DMT that you can take. Um, ayahuasca, I don't know if you've heard of that. I've heard of it, but I... But it sends you into a trance state, and apparently people see things, and you can interact with, well, they say it's gods and stuff like that. Do you believe in anything like that? 
No. Mm -hmm. Anything that would chemically alter your state of consciousness is a hindrance, not a helper. But it activates your pineal gland, which which yeah, secretes that, which makes you dream, basically. And apparently, before you die, this releases a chemical, which is where everyone says they're going to heaven. And yes, the eye of Horus. But, however, I would not, again, utilize chemicals to dilate that that's something you should be able to do on your own by avoiding chemicals to help decalcify right. you know adding more pollutants to your own body is not going to benefit you i mean i can give you a shot of epinephrine and increase your cardiac rhythms you know tenfold however it's not something that's going to be readily available you know when you need it so you can activate your third eye whenever you'd like. Yes, it just takes training and time. We live in such an instant gratification, you know, now, now, now way of life that teaching is almost being, you know, deemed unnecessary. You walk around with devices in your hands and on your desks that contain the knowledge of the known world. Yet, people still don't grasp the concept of utilizing it. So, who trained you to use your third eye? My parents. To be in a quiet, relaxed place. And one of the first lessons was to hum and to concentrate on that frequency. And in that frequency you would feel a warmth. And in that warmth, you would go in. You would notice your heart rate change, your breathing start to change, and your body to relax. You know, after that, you would do blind sketch. Or again, you would start with your own tone, you would focus, and you would let your hand freely draw. And then you would analyze the imagery afterwards. Have you ever been diving? No. Okay, um, imagine diving and just surface, you know, snorkeling, whatever. And you come across a deep, deep chasm or a deep hole, a cenote. And you, you're in water. You're not going to fall. But in that instant, that fear in your stomach is very, very great because you believe you're going to fall. And you scamper back to shallower water. You know what's going on. And you can manipulate things there. I believe um, from people who, who have done it in the past, it's a bit like when you first get there, you, you realise you've been there before. And people in, uh, tend to describe it as intense feelings of love or of peace. You know, this is higher conscious. There is no room for, you know, celestial baggage. It would be like going to your refrigerator and you normally go in the main part where your milk and cheese and eggs are at. But occasionally you open the top. You're still in the refrigerator. You're just in a higher part of it. Right. You know, everyone has access to this, you know, second floor of their mental home. But very few people visit. And can everyone do this? Or is the people out there that it's just not possible for them to do it? If you remain closed-minded, you will not be able to achieve this. You must accept that there are things different than you. <clears throat> there are other beings. You must quit yelling and screaming at others. Because you don't understand, you cannot call them 
you know, a demon or stupid or misunderstood or touched. It's, it's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. If you're trying to enlighten yourself, then do your best to understand. And if you cannot make sense of it, then walk away. Find another path. There are many paths to this. However, understanding oneself and understanding others is a major factor. So have you ever heard or seen anything that you can't explain? Oh, several things. I'm trying to find something that's actually approved (laughs) for uh, this channel. (laughs) That was a bit of uh, lewd humor.